Hello everyone, this is Mr. Undercoffler, and today we're going to be looking at the guided notes called Using Proportional Relationships to Solve Word Problems. Alright, follow along with me. If a relationship has a constant unit rate, then it is a proportional relationship. All proportional relationships can be expressed using an equation in the form of, and you can follow along with me, we're going to have some variable. It's officially called the dependent of variable. It can be any letter that, we, that makes sense to choose. That variable is equal to the unit rate, which is traditionally just called k. Now, that'll actually be a number. Whatever the unit rate is, that number will be the k. That's also known as a constant of proportionality. And then multiply times another variable, officially called the independent variable. It can be any letter that makes sense to choose. So you're not always going to see x and y. We're going to pick letters that make sense to choose based on the scenario that we're given. So here are some basic examples. The tickets cost $22 per ticket. All right, do you remember what the word per means? It implies multiplication. So $22 per ticket means times to the ticket. So notice the 22 is times to the T for the number of tickets. It's not times to the cost, it's per ticket, so times the tickets. Now, that will equal the cost. So cost does show up over here on the left for the variable on that side of the equal sign. All right, next example. It rained 0.25 or a quarter inches per hour. How do I write that as an equation? Well, per hour means times to the hour. So notice the 0.25 is times to the variable for the number of hours. And then the inches of rain is the variable we have over here on the left. All right, let's have you try. Write an algebraic equation for each scenario that is described, similar to what I did up here on these basic, basic examples. Hit pause in the video. Try the next two sentences on your own, writing an equation, and then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. All right, did you already write an equation for each of these sentences? If you did not, you better hit pause now because I'm about to go over it right now. She was paid $32 per hour. Again, the word per tells us what we're multiplying the unit rate to which variable, per hour. So we need to multiply the $32 times the number of hours. Did you have 32 times most likely H? What will that equal? Well, that's going to equal what she was paid. So maybe the variable P is the best choice for that problem. The food has 26 grams of carbohydrates per serving. Always find the word per. So that way, even though the 26 is way over here, is 22, 26 grams of carbohydrates per serving. So you need to have the 26 times the variable for the number of servings, not times the number of grams of carbohydrates. If you have G or C here, get your pencil and eraser moving and fix it. It's per serving. So 26 is times the S for the number of servings. Now, what will that equal? Here's where you could pick a variety of letters. I picked C for the grams of carbohydrates. You could pick G, technically, if you wanted to, for grams of carbohydrates. You could pick F, since we're talking about grams of carbohydrates in food. I think the best choice here is C for carbohydrates, because there's also things in food called protein, grams of protein, or F for grams of fat. So I picked C, because we're specifically talking about the grams of carbohydrates but you could technically pick whatever variable you want at that place, just not the S. The S had to be times to the 26 because it was per serving. All right, so what are we gonna be doing on these word problems coming up in the next couple pages? Well, there's basically three parts. Part one, you're gonna find the unit rate, which generically is called K. You don't have to remember that it's called K. What you do need to remember is that a fancy phrase for unit rate is the constant of proportionality. I know it sounds real fancy, but that is a synonym for the phrase unit rate. You will have to ask yourself, 
what order makes sense for your division. We know if money's involved, like the price or the cost of something, that's going to go in the numerator. Um, so price per pound makes sense, whereas pound per price, I already crossed it out, would not make sense. So you always have to ask yourself, what order makes sense for the order that you divide in? After you get your constant of proportionality, part two, you're going to write your equation. It's in that generic form of a variable equals the unit rate times some other variable. You can pick whatever letters make sense for your two variables. And then finally, we're going to use the equation to solve like a part C, a final part to the word problem. All right, I actually have some examples already done for you. Let's take a look at them. Next page. Problem number one, the total cost of three t-shirts was $50.85. Okay, so what do we got involved here? We got money and we got number of t-shirts. So what order makes sense for a unit rate? Would it be the t-shirts per dollar or would it be the price per t-shirt? Well, price per t-shirt makes perfect sense. In fact, I have told you before, if money is involved, the money will go in the numerator. Now, what we're going to do here is we're not going to use the fraction key. You've learned this before with unit rates. We're actually going to divide top number divided by bottom number. So $50.85 divided by three, you can do it in your calculator right now, will give you $16.95 per t-shirt. The unit of measure on top is on the left and the unit of measure on the bottom is to the right of the word per. So that's part A. That's the constant of proportionality, more commonly known as the unit rate. Part B, write an algebraic equation that relates, oh look, they're even telling us what variables to pick here. C for the cost of the, of the shirts to the number of t-shirts, they're telling us to pick T, bought. Now how do we do this? Remember what I taught you about the word per. Here's what you're going to think. Per t-shirt means times the actual number of t-shirts. So that's why my 1695 gets times to the t, not to the c. It didn't say per cost. It said per t-shirt. That's why it's got to be multiplied to the variable for the t-shirts. Now, what will that be equal to? That will be equal to the cost, which was the other variable that part B told me to use. Now, part C, use your equation. So the first thing you're going to do is take your equation from part B and rewrite it for the beginning of your work for part C. And what are we using our equation to find? To find the total cost of seven t-shirts. All right, so they just told you that we are supposed to find the total cost. Finding the cost means the C for cost will stay the unknown variable. They're telling us we have seven t-shirts. So that seven is the t-shirts that will replace the variable t for t-shirts. So that's what I do. Substitute it in. 16.95 times seven, use your calculator. You'll get 118.65, that is dollars. Make sure you always have the unit of measure for any word problem answer. All right, so that was example number one. What about problem number two? The athlete burned 372 calories from running two miles. Okay, what do we have involved this time? We have calories and we have miles. So we'd have to, for part A, finding the constant proportionality, which means unit rate. Think what order makes sense calories per mile or miles per calorie. Well, if you're not familiar with this one, maybe be thankful that I did it for you, but calories per mile would be the order that makes sense. So what we're gonna have to do for our work is make sure calories is first, that's up on top, and miles is second, which means that's on the bottom, the denominator of the fraction. We will divide in our calculator, giving us 186 calories is first, per mile is second, so that's to the right of the word per. Part B, write an algebraic expression, sorry, equation that relates the number of calories. Okay, they're telling us to pick C for calories, burned to the number of miles M, so M is for the miles that the athlete ran. So here's what we have to think. Back to our unit rate, per mile. Per mile means times the miles. So that means our 186 
better be multiplied to m for the miles because it was per mile. That's why m is next to the 186, not the c. The c will go for calories on the other side of the equal sign. Now, part c. Use your equation. Okay, so we take our equation from part b. We rewrite it for the beginning of the work of part c. Now, what are we asked to find? We're asked to find, sorry, let me switch to highlighter here. We are asked to find the amount of miles. So this time, the miles is what we're trying to find. That's going to be the unknown variable. We are told that we have 465 calories. Well, calories is C. So this time, the 465 will go in for the C. Now, check this out. The unknown variable is not by itself. It is actually being multiplied by 186. So you might remember how I taught you to ask yourself how do you solve an equation, ask yourself what's happening to the variable. Here it's being multiplied by 186. Therefore, the inverse is to divide. So that's why we're going to divide on both sides to get the m by itself. So what is 465 divided by 186? Use your calculator, you'll get 2.5. This is miles because I'm trying to find, I have it highlighted in green for you up here, the amount of miles. So it's 2.5 miles equals m. Now you might have noticed part C of number one was a little bit different from part C of number two. When do you need to use inverse operations on both sides to solve and when do you not? When the variable is by itself, like right here, C is by itself. The only thing it's next to is an equal sign then you will not need to divide as an inverse on both sides. You won't. You'll instead just do what the right side says to do, which is to multiply. But when there is something that is happening to your variable, like you see here, the m is multiplied to the 186, then we're going to have to do the inverse. The inverse of multiplication is division on both sides to solve. So that's how you know when you're going to have to divide on both sides as an inverse and when you're not. If the variable's by itself, no inverse needed. You're just going to multiply like the right side of the equation says to do. But if your variable's not by itself, it's be, if it's being multiplied by a number, then you're going to have to divide by that number as an inverse to get the m by itself. All right, let's try number three together. Pencils in your hand. Jamie made $14.30 profit after selling 22 hot dogs. Okay, how are we going to set up our work for part A to find the constant of proportionality? Will we put the money on top or will we put the number of hot dogs on top? Do I want profit per hot dog or hot dogs per profit? Well, as I've taught you before many times, when money is involved, the money will go up on top, so that way it's the first part of your unit rate, the profit per hot dog. So profit on top, that's the money, number of hot dogs on bottom. Divide in your calculator. Make sure you're punching in the 14.3 first, then divided by 22 to the right of the, division, of the division symbol. Do that right now in your calculator, and you should get point. Six, five. Now let's put the units of measure. We had dollars of profit, that's first, on the left, and then to the right of the word per will be the denominator, which was hot dogs. Part B. Write an algebraic expression, or sorry, I keep saying expression, it's equations that represent or that relates the amount of profit to the number of hot dogs. All right, we are told that we're going to use P for profit and H for the hot dogs sold. So what is going to be next to our 0.65? Will it be the P or will it be the H? Well, ladies and gentlemen, always find the word per. Whatever is to the right of the word per will be to the right of your unit rates number. Per hot dog times the hot dog. So ladies and gentlemen, you should have H being multiplied right next to 
the 0.65. Therefore, the P for profit goes on the other side of the equal sign. Always find the word per from your constant of proportionality so that way you know what variable goes next to the number for your unit rate in part B. All right, part C. Use your equation. Let me stop right there. We must use our equation. So pencils in your hand, part C, the first thing you do is rewrite your equation. Use your equation to find the amount of profit. Let me stop right there. We are asked to find the amount of profit. So the P is going to stay the unknown variable made from selling 50 hot dogs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if it's 50 hot dogs, that's going to replace the H. So let's do that right now. 50 replaces H. So instead of times H, it's times 50. Now, do I need inverse operations to solve? My unknown variable is by itself. The only thing it is next to is an equal sign. That's it. So unlike problem number two, where my variable was being multiplied by 186 and I had to divide to get the variable by itself, problem number three is more like number one, where the variable was already by itself. So we don't need to divide on both sides. We're just going to do the multiplication that it tells us to do on the right, 0.65 times 50. Do that in your calculator right now. That should give you 32.5. Now, you're not going to write 32.5. Since this is dollars of profit, dollars and cents always has two digits to the right. So this zero is not optional. It's dollars and cents. You must have two digits to the right of the decimal. So don't just say $32.5. No, 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 $32.50. Okay, I just led you through problem number three. I would like for you to do as much as you can on this last page on your own. We got number four, we got number five, six, and seven. Do it all as much as you can on your own. If you do get stuck and need to use part of the video to help you, fine. But I don't want you to be the kind of kid who just lets the video play the whole way through and you just write everything down. That's not going to help you learn. You have to try problems on your own. So now's the time. Hit pause, do four, do five, do six, do seven, as far as you can before you hit play to see how you did. All right. Did you already do four, five, six, and seven on your own, or at least four and five on your own? If not, hit pause now, do four and five on your own, because I'm about to go over number four right now. Part A, find the constant of proportionality. Did you put the money on top and the 15 miles on bottom? When money is involved, it's got to go first up in the numerator. Divide in your calculator. You will get 16 cents, 0.16, dollar sign, that's 16 cents, per mile. Now, part B, what should your 0.16 get multiplied to? What variable should go here, the C or the M? Well, it's per mile. Per mile means times to the miles. So did you have the miles multiply to the 0.16? If not, get your eraser moving and fix it. It didn't say per cost. It said per mile. So M is times to the 0.16. The cost will go on the other side. Part C, use your equation. So the first thing you should have done is rewrote the equation from part B. Now, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find how far she can drive. How far is the miles? The $12 is the cost. So did you put the $12 in for the cost? It's not 12 miles. So that doesn't go in for M, that goes in for C. If you already botched up part C and have the 12 at the wrong spot, hit pause, erase it, fix your work. Okay, how do I solve for M? Since it's being multiplied by 0.16, I'm gonna have to divide on both sides to get that variable by itself. And 12 divided by 0.16 is 75 miles, make sure you have MI for miles, not just M, because that'd be meters, 75 miles equals M. All right, 
Problem number five, 12 ounces for $15.84. Once again, there's money involved. You should have put it on top, divided by 12 ounces. That's going to give you $1.32 per ounce. Make sure you have the dollar sign on the left. Make sure you have per ounce to the right. Part B, write an algebraic equation. We've got P for the price and W for the weight in ounces. And that's because we don't want to pick O for ounces because O looks like a zero. So what do you have next to your 1.32? Did you put the P next to it or the W next to it? Well, how do I know? It's not a guessing game. It's about the word per. Per ounce means times the ounces. W is the weight in ounces. So you need to have the 132, the 1.32 times the ounces, times the W, weight in ounces. The P for the price will go on the other side of the equal sign. All right, part C, use your equation. If you messed up your variables in part B, I hope you already erased it and fixed it. And that's going to affect your first step in part C because we use our equation. What are we trying to find this time? We're trying to find the price. Well, that means our unknown variable this time is P. And the 20 ounces is the weight. So did you put 20 ounces for the weight in for the W? Notice this time my unknown variable is by itself. The P is just next to an equal sign. So do what the right size says to do, 1.32 times 20 in your calculator, $26.40. Since the unit of measure is dollars for the price, you must have a second digit to the right of the decimal point. The cents for dollars and cents always has two digits, not just one. So if you kept the 26.4, you are wrong. I would take off the half point. If it was a test or a quiz, you must have the zero here for $26.40 sense. All right, let's keep rolling here. If you did not do six and seven, hit pause now because you really should do these last two problems on your own. They are a little bit trickier, but I did underline some things to help you. Try six and seven on your own if you have not done them already because here I go showing you the work. So hopefully you already did these problems on your own. Part A, find the constant proportionality and oh, check this out. They want you to find it in feet per second. And I even underlined the word second. Now, why did I do that? Because they originally gave me one minute. Well, they didn't say feet per minute. They said feet per second. So you're going to have to do a conversion. You're going to have to realize 60 seconds is equivalent to one minute. So instead of having 2,010 feet over one for one minute, I need per second. So it's 60 seconds replaces one minute. That's what made number six a little bit trickier. Hit pause and use your eraser if you set it up wrong. Because if you have part A wrong, you're going to have part B and part C wrong as well. So hit pause if you need to. Okay, part A, divide 33.5 feet per second. Part B. You better have the time in seconds as your variable to the right of the 33.5. Why? Because it's per second. So the time in seconds is next to the, is, you know, the per. That's what it's multiplied to. That's what it's next to the, that's why it's next to the 33.5. Distance in D goes on the right. Part C, use your equation to find out the distance for how far it can travel in, 30, in 45 seconds. 45 seconds is the time, so that replaces the T. So all you have to do, multiply 1,507.5. You do not need to put a zero. This is not dollars and cents, so you don't need a second digit after the decimal point. It is distance in feet. And the last problem, train went 555 miles in six hours. Find the constant proportionality. Miles per hour is the order that makes sense. So you better have the miles on top and the hours on bottom. It would not make sense to do hours per mile. Divide, you will get 92.5 miles per hour. You can also call that MPH if you would like. Part B, D's for distance, T's for hours. Since it is per 
hour. You need to have the 92.5 multiplied to the hours. That's why my T in hours is to the right of the 92.5. The distance is on the other side of the equal sign. Finally, part C, use your equation. So let's use it, let's write it down. To find the time in minutes, oh, tricky. Did you realize that the time so far has been in hours? Well, then now they want you to find the time in minutes. Well, first things first, T will stay the unknown. 74 miles is the distance. So that's why D gets replaced with 74. So we're gonna have to divide by 92.5 to get the T by itself, that's gonna give us 0.8, but what is that? That's the time in hours. Well, I don't want it to stay in hours. I need it to be in minutes. Well, you guys know how many minutes are in an hour, correct? 60. So if you take 0.8 hours times 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, you will get the time in minutes, which is what part C required you to find. So this took a little bit of extra work to convert our answer of time in hours into minutes, 48 minutes. All right, that concludes the guided notes on using proportional relationships to solve word problems. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.